Coming up, Brian joins me and we chat DOSBox. We'll show you some fun tricks you can do with it, some easy ways to get games going, oh, and even an awesome way to get your retro games to sync across all your devices in this week's episode of An In-Depth Look. Hey there, Brian. Welcome to an in-depth look. Oh, hi there, Chris. Where am I? Well, we're in the in-depth look library because uh, you know when we go when we go retro, you have to go into the library. And uh, this week we're talking about DOSBox. The I had, I had talked about a game called Star Trek: The Twenty Fifth Anniversary a while ago. Great game. Yeah, but it requires DOSBox, and people wrote me in like, Chris, uh, I wasn't born when this game was released. I don't know what <laughs> DOS is or what DOSBox is, but I thought you know I got so I got to talk about that, and I know that you are a huge DOSBox. I actually use DOSBox every single day. Daily. I, I don't. I can't remember a day I haven't run <laughs> DOSBox. Literally right. in the last two Why years. Why do you use DOSBox daily? Because DOS, it's just DOS, right? DOSBox is just DOS, and it's just DOS mostly for games. It literally is is a version of DOS, and it is emulating an x86 PC mm. and a specific version of DOS that emulates a Sound so Blaster like card, a an AdLib card. little mini VMware, but for DOS only. Just for DOS. It's super fast, super lightweight, and just for DOS games. So like what kind of game besides Star Trek 25th Anniversary? Wow. Like half of the games up on goodoldgames.com. Yeah. If you go to GOG.com and you do a search for DOSBox in their search list, what they come up with is they come yeah. up with these lists. I do. do and, I those, and those particular lists, there are actually lists on there of people that say great games on here that were good in DOSBox. Mm. And so you'll find a list there. So things like, um, let's say, Master of Orion 2, Civilization 1, the original Sim City, Duke Nukem 3D. Yeah, that's what I was I looking mean, at. Wolfenstein 3D. Huh? Uh, the Settlers. Yeah. I mean, there's just so many... Great yeah. games that run it off. Syndicate, awesome game. Star Control 2. The amount of great games available in the old DOS days is really large, and yeah. this is a great way to play them. And here's here's what I do. All you right. want to hear what I do? I do, I do. All right, here's what I do. So I've got multiple machines. So yeah. I've got my desktops at home, my laptops. You run DOSBox in every one of these machines you have here. So here's a little Lenovo tablet. It's right. a little Atom-powered tablet. It's like it does double duty as a as laptop a or a tablet. a laptop and a tablet, yeah. yeah. Here is an Android-based tablet, a right. little 7 inch Android tablet. I run a version of DOSBox on here. Here is my Nokia N900 right. ARM-based phone. Yeah. Little keyboard on it. Run DOSBox yeah. on here. It's a little slower than the I've other got, ones, but I've it got works. DOSBox on my mobile phone because yeah. it was, so my grandpa is an old DOS user and he has uh, like VisiCalc spreadsheets or something and I wanted to see if we could get them launched up on yeah. a phone and you know. Had to go. It was great and to him, like he needed access to these spreadsheets. Like like nobody's business because he was going through an audit and some financial stuff and he'd actually worked for AT and T years ago and they were all based on VisiCalc. He loaded that up and there's so many people who just need to get to that one file. It was totally awesome. It's totally totally awesome. So here's here's a little couple of tips though. Since this is a virtualized environment, why not take full advantage of it? Okay. If You've got these old great games and a couple of these old tools. Hell, you can run Windows 3.1 on here if you want to, and it runs actually pretty darn good. <laughs> I don't, I don't so know. here's here's what you can, here's what you can do. So DOSBox starts up, and you'll notice right away if you're an old DOS guy, you're missing a ton of stuff. There's no text yeah, editor. Yeah. There's no basic interpreter. Yeah. You have just enough stuff to run games, that and that's all. And that's no more. And it starts up at a, as a Z drive. Yeah. It boots off of the Z drive, and there's only a couple of files on and there. And when it starts, you can say, what does that Z drive actually point to on my computer? Like, what folder is the Z drive actually looking at? Right. So, theoretically, you can install FreeDOS under DOSBox, which FreeDOS is great because it's a completely open source re-implementation yeah. of DOS, and it has a ton of utilities. Don't ever do that. Oh, so here's that's the thing. What I did. Cool, cool to play with. Yeah, but you'll actually sacrifice a lot of compatibility oh. with software and games. Oh, okay. The great thing about DOSBox is the OS itself is custom tailored to properly emulate Sound Blaster cards and all the yeah. different video modes. So what you can do though is grab some of the cool utilities from FreeDOS and oh. copy them into your DOSBox Cause installation because they run just fine. Nice. So if you want a great text editor and 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 uh, even DOS-based web browsers, you can copy them all in and run them just fine. You sent me a link to it. I'll include a link to a DOS-based web browser if somebody yeah. wants to go browse. It works it. oddly well. <laughs> it's stupid how well it works. Some people can check that out. I, I, I've always used it for gaming. I know people have used it for practical purposes. Do you actually really use it on these portable devices? Do you really use it? Absolutely. Here, Chris, Yeah. click. 
boom, you'll notice when this, I got on my N900 here, I launched DOSBox. Yeah. You know, it immediately booted up, auto mounted my, uh, my drive Super here. fast too. It has all my keyboards properly mapped. I bring in, and this is one cool thing about DOSBox. You can remap your keyboard and have specific keyboard mappings for different applications. And you just use a little command called keyb, key K-E-Y-B, space, then type in the file that has all your keyboard mapping, space, and then U.S. if you're in the United States and whatnot, and you load that particular keyboard That's thing. That's cool. You notice I have all sorts of applications I loaded up I see Star up Trek, right the 25th anniversary on there. You know, even on this low-powered machine, Civilization well, 1 runs DOS, great. Right? I mean, this thing it has like great. a gigahertz processor or something yeah. like that in there. Well, I mean, that's It's not quite that fast, but it's pretty good. Okay, 800, whatever it is. Yeah. You know, it's like... Hey, that's way so more than a DOS machine. So here's has. what I do. Here's what I do. Since technically it's just pointing to a folder yeah. on my machine. So right. I have a home folder that I keep on my on my server at home. Oh, so you have like filled with my games, yeah. my apps, everything that I know runs great under DOSBox. I then go on all of my individual machines that run DOSBox. Yeah. Edit my auto exec bat, which you do by editing your DOSBox configuration file, which is in your home folder under dot DOSBox. Okay. Edit that configuration file. At the very, very end, what you want to do is you want to type in in the auto exec bat session section, type in mount space C for your C drive or whatever drive letter you want to give that space and then the folder to the full path to With the all folder the you want to you want to point to and then that's your c drive and then right below it do a little c colon and that automatically changes the folder and the drive that you're you're pointing at on startup of DOSBox okay. directly to your C drive. So then you just keep one master folder with all the goodies in it and Big you just move that folder. around between all your devices. Yeah. And so that's nice even if you just want to play on your PC because you could keep that like in a Dropbox, wipe your PC, reload Dropbox, syncs right back down and you just point DOSBox to that. And here's what's extra great. That's nice. If you own those games, mm -hmm. let's say you bought them all from goodoldgames.com or you own the, the physical versions. Well, let's say maybe you sync them with your, uh, uh, your Dropbox account. Yeah. All your saved games are now synced oh. across all of your devices. That's sweet. Try doing that with most games. So you're literally, your DOS saved games are synced I across like your that. phones, your everything, your tablets, everything that you can sync Dropbox with. Really, really friggin' cool. Now, there's there's definitely some drawbacks to using DOSBox. Oh, yeah? Big and First and foremost, folder caching. If you load up DOSBox, and then you go into the folder that you have mounted. Mm -hmm. Say you have a C drive mounted and it's pointed to your uh, your home folder slash DOS games or yeah. something like that. And you drop a couple more folders full of DOS games in there. Okay. They're not going to show up in DOSBox. Oh, yeah. Until you refresh them or quit DOSBox and relaunch. Okay. That's not Some horrible. Some downsides, but not horrible. Because if you know you want to get to that, you just load it up before you start DOSBox. Like, right. You drop Tr Star Trek 25th in there, and then you're good to go. Yeah. Now, DOSBox is fantastic. DOSBox does not do the best of job at emulating modern-day networking. What it does a really good job at is emulating old-school networking over TCP IP. Oh. So, let's say you have uh, Doom. Yeah, or, you or want to do a network game or something. Or you want to play an old game that goes over IPX protocol yeah. or any of those old school Net things. Or whatever. Yeah. It emulates that over TCP IP. So the, so so the app's you can have, wiser. So I can have DOSBox running here. Yeah. You can have DOSBox running over there. And I could be, you could be on Windows, I could be on a Mac or Linux. No or, problem. Or a portable device. No problem at all. That's sweet. Now, some of those things, like, some of those things, I'll have to act as a server, and there's commands. If you do a little intro, you get it, get into DOSBox and type intro, hit enter. Yeah. It'll give you a list of all the different commands that you can use. Okay. And it'll give you a little, a little brief tutorial on how you can start a server as uh, for, for I, networking. I as actually kind of games. prefer that it does the emulation, because I would that think great? that makes it more compatible with the older programs. It totally does. Now, cool. You could do a great. You could do a lot of this stuff under VMware mm -hmm. or VirtualBox. Problem is, they don't do a great job necessarily of emulating for the old games. Yeah, because the those, games is what DOSBox is about. They expect particular hardware, yeah. running at particular speeds and yeah. all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, VMware does a better job at running Windows ninety five than DOSBox does. So, but I don't want to run Windows ninety five. I want to run DOS and I want to run old games from the eighties. DOSBox, of course, is available for for everybody. And everybody. You can, just, you can grab it over at DOSBox.com. I'll include some links in the show notes for uh, for different folks, maybe for different. West and stuff, but it's it's an old school uh, operating system for sure. But it's free, so you can check it out. There's no risk in trying it, and it's simple to get going. It's 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 glorious. I have I, it. it is probably one of my favorite applications. It is one of the few applications I actually run every single day. Wow, every day. Well, there you have it. <laughs> Thanks to the B man for coming on and chatting DOS box. I've got more links like how the actual emulation works, as well as some links to some apps like that. Uh, DOS-based web browser that the B-Man mentioned. You can find those over in the show notes. 
I also want to tell you about the Jupiter Signal. That's our monthly newsletter, and it's going to come out soon, and there'll be some interesting tidbits in that, and actually in every edition. It's a once-a-month release, so that way you won't fill up your inbox. Go over to bit.ly slash Signal, or I'll try to remember to put a link in the show notes for that as well. Also, something else you can check out is uh, me over on any social network you like at bit.ly slash Chris Fisher. That's probably a great way to send in a suggestion for the show. Or you could email me, chris at jupiterbroadcasting.com. Thanks to all of you who have also filled out the new contact form we've got. I've gotten a bunch of questions and uh, some topic ideas that I'll be going over soon. Might do a Q&A episode in the near future as well, so I'll be collecting all of those. So feel free to keep sending that stuff in. You'll probably see it in a future episode. And don't forget, an in-depth look comes out every Saturday over at jupiterbroadcasting.com. And you can also find the RSS feeds there at the show post. You subscribe to one of those RSS feeds, something magic happens. You just get every new episode, like it's some sort of automagical series of tubes. It's incredible. You can find links to that in the show notes as well. All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for watching this week's episode of An In-Depth Look. I'll see you right back here next Saturday.